Hey everybody, welcome back to Tim Travels. I'm your host, Terry. Um, just getting back on the road. It's November 10th in the evening. Uh, first of all, November 10th, everybody knows what happened at Ton Tavern in Philadelphia on this day. I don't know if that's actually a thing, but it is the Marine Corps birthday. Happy birthday to the Marines. Um, the Navy just announced, because you know the Marines are part of the Department of the Navy. The Navy just announced that um, they're going to name a ship, probably a DDG, after um, Marine Sergeant John Bassalone, Medal of Honor recipient, so that's cool to hear that. Um, he's a very famous Marine. Um, also, in Navy-related news, um, they just found the USS Harder, which was sunk in like 3,000 feet of water off of um, off the island of Luzon in the Philippines. Um, and you may know if you uh, paid any attention to the Kennedy assassination that John F. Kennedy was shot in a place called Dealey Plaza. Well, you might have wondered who that was named after. And it was named after Navy Commander Samuel Dealey. Here's a picture of him. Dealey was posthumously awarded the Medal of Honor, um, or posthumously received it for his actions as commanding officer of USS Harder during World War II, and also um, like a group commander. He, um, Harder sunk 16 Japanese ships. Um, and they were part of a three submarine group that was operating off the Philippines in 1944. Um, but the other two submarines were able to get away. Um, Harder was depth because they basically used their last three torpedoes to try to, sh to try to sink a Japanese escort or in attacking a Japanese escort and it depth charged them and they were sunk. So, um, and I think, you know, it, anyway, that, that's a little news they found, but they found the harder. It's basically intact and upright, but like I said, 3000 feet of water. Um, so anyway, Tomorrow's Veterans Day. I'm still going to do the Veterans Day thing I was talking about, but I wanted to talk quickly about, you know, the freight recession and a couple of other things that are coming up, like I guess this, well, in eight days. So um, I saw a thing yesterday that the tender rejection rate is starting to tip, tick upward. And if you don't know what that is, what that means is that loads that are you know shippers that are desirous to have carriers on their loads they're starting to see a little bit higher rejection and what that does is when loads are rejected by the companies that they would normally go to what ends up happening is those loads go on the spot market and because of the law kind of a supply and demand right there's less capacity or supply of trucks to move loads that's going to drive up demand um and or tilt the balance i should say it's really economics is a study of scarcity right but there's less trucks available um with the same demand that's going to drive up the price of hauling um you know i i think it remains to be seen because we've seen these little blips over the past couple of years but the numbers seem like they're trending in the right direction. Um, but there's some other interesting things that are going on. On the 18th of November, uh, the anybody who is in a prohibited status in the FMCSA drug and alcohol clearinghouse will have to have their licenses, their commercial driver's licenses, suspended or revoked by the state driver licensing authorities so um, the SDLAs so what that means 
is that there's going to be about 179 less, excuse me, 179,000 less CDLs that are like outstanding and valid. It doesn't mean that that's necessarily going to affect the industry that a lot of us work in, which is the truckload hauling, you know, truckload industry, a regular route truckload industry. Um, that may be, there may be LTL drivers that are impacted. It may be dump truck drivers. It may be people that are, you know, independent contractors or whatever. Um, so it, it won't necessarily mean that all of a sudden, you know, Knight Swift or Prime or Creed or somebody, all these big carriers are going to be missing 10,000 drivers. But what it does mean is that there are a lot of people that are driving right now, today, that may not be driving in a week and a half at least not legally so you know and that's always the rub right like a lot of these prognosticators are like hey you know this is what's going to happen and my issue with that is that you know as i've said on this channel i think there's a whole subculture of people that drive without cdls to begin with so the fact that they had a CDL and got popped on a on a piss test or got a got a DUI or something, that really doesn't mean a whole lot. Those a lot of those people might just continue to drive. I mean, think about it. They, you know, somebody that got popped on a piss test or got a DUI, they get a notice in the mail that their CDL is is revoked or suspended. Okay. I mean, if they already have a, if they still have a job after having those instances, and they didn't have a a plan to get back in the, you know, get back on the good side, um, then. And by the way, if you ever see ads where it says no SAP candidates, though SAP candidates are people that are on a an essentially recovery program, and and, and I don't mean that in terms of like. Um, like detox or or rehab, I just mean that they're going through steps that the FMCSA has mandated for them to get back in their good graces and not be in a prohibited status. But getting back to what I was saying, you know, a lot of these people might be like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> you know, it's it's the, it's like this joke that I've always done with my kids. You know, I'd be like, hey. I'm tired, can you drive? And they're like, Dad, I don't have a license. And I'm like, you don't need a license to drive a car, you just need to know how to drive a car. So it wouldn't surprise me that that, hunt, that huge number, almost 180,000 CDL holders, uh, you know, I don't think all of a sudden you're gonna be like, man, there's like 180,000 trucks not on the road this week. I don't think it's gonna work like that. So anyway, um, yeah, so it, I think it remains to be seen. I mean, maybe there are reasons to be optimistic. The other thing is, after the election, I think there are a lot of people that are thinking, oh, <clears throat> you know, there's just going to be this roundup of anybody that's in the country illegally. And about 10% about of all truck drivers are, from what I've read, about 10% are on green cards. Now, they're here legally, but this idea that there's going to be some roundup and, and, you know, people are just going to, you know, all these opportunities are going to open up and capacity is going to drop because of that. I, you know, again, I, don't, I just don't see it happening, right? Because, the, because as I've outlined before, the downside risk to driving illegally is really low. I mean, if you don't have a wreck, if you don't do something to get you put in handcuffs, you know, there, there's not a lot of risk to driving without a license, uh, without a commercial vehicle license. There's not a lot of risk to driving without a valid medical card. You know, there's any number of things that you're supposed to do, but, you know, the penalty is, it does not, even come close to outweighing 
what you can, the money you can make. It's like any other crime, right? Like people that sell drugs, they feel like the risk is, is worth, you know, the reward is worth the risk. And same thing in trucking. But unlike selling drugs, these people that are driving trucks illegally and these companies that are operating illegally, I don't think anybody's going to jail. They're just like, oh, you can't do that anymore. And then, then these companies just change their names and continue to do it. And you know, there's these orders shutting them down. But again, it's a civil, it's a civil issue. You know, and, and that's just how it works. And people just keep recreating things and they just form a new company or whatever and off they go. So anyway, <clears throat> we'll see. I'd be interested to hear what people are seeing. I'm pretty busy, but you know, now like I haven't really hauled any sawdust. I'm just running dry van. I got a load. Uh, I'm leaving Maryland in a cup, you know, I'm heading out and I'm delivering this over in Ohio in the morning. So, you know, I'm just, I'm just happy to be busy. So anyway, be safe and I'll, I'll come at you tomorrow. Bye.